Yo guys, what is good? Welcome back to the Uncle Sharma channel here once again for a match preview and with a familiar face uh, as I was telling them just before we went live he's the most capped non-interista on this channel Tito from Viola Nation is always very gracious coming on to give us the Fiorentina side of things thank you for coming on my brother Hey, thanks for having me always good to be here and uh, be back again now and uh, yeah, push that cap record forward yeah, yeah, you guys you can see him. He's he's got a new haircut from the previous episode we did with him, and he's got a new coach. And things things are looking things are looking better for Fiorentina, right? Tell, tell talk to me a little bit about Fiorentina. They look they're looking like a very interesting team this year, finally. Yeah, yeah, things. Yeah, I figured I needed to uh, clean up a little bit to to match the uh, the forecast here for Fiorentina. <laughs> things definitely looking better. I think the big thing with Italiano is he's got a very clear philosophy. Mm -hmm. that he has imparted on the players that they already seem to believe in and be willing to play with uh, no matter the situation. Uh, and that's a, that's quite a change after, what, half a decade in the wilderness since uh, since the first <laughs> Vincenzo Montella yeah. uh, stint. Uh, yeah, going through Paulo Sosa. I don't know if there's any Poland fans here. I'm sure y'all are familiar with it, uh, with <laughs> what that means. And then, yeah, going into Stefano Pioli, uh, he had a rough stretch in Florence. Then, uh, oh Lord, have mercy, Beppe Iacchini and Vincenzo Montella again, and Cesare Prandelli and Beppe Iacchini again, and then Beppe Iacchini <laughs> again, and then yeah, two three weeks of Rino Gattuso. So yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, oh, we, could, we could all laugh about that too now for yeah. sure. <laughs> you you as a writer on you know Viola Nation, you oh, this God. team keeps you busy, right? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's great. There's no shortage of content out there, right? <laughs> uh, no, with Italiano though, I think the team is definitely moving in the right direction. Especially this year, it looks like it's going to be a pretty serious year of transition for a lot of the bigger clubs in Serie A. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly looking at those Knotts County cosplayers down in uh, the relegation zone, which I'm sure y'all are enjoying too. Yes, let's just let's just pull that up just now that you mentioned that, just to oh, you know, oh please, not, 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 not to not to rub it in, but you know, to rub it in. Oh, absolutely to rub it in. I'm remorselessly <laughs> giggling about this. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mine is two goal difference as well. Uh, I love it. I just straight into the veins, man. Straight into the veins. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Whereas yeah, you it's... guys have to scroll up to, to, to find you guys. Which is really weird when you uh, Google Serie A standings and uh, you don't have to hit the show rest <laughs> for Fiorentina sitting in 14th. So yeah, it's 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 taking some getting used to for us. It mm -hmm. feels great. Uh but then there y'all are still in the same spot. So uh hey. feeling, a, feeling a little bit anxious about about tomorrow, if I'm being honest. Yeah, but you you've started off uh, really well this season, as we can see here. The you know, obviously you got that first loss against Roma, but you went down to 10 men because of uh, Dragovsky losing his head, and it was probably quite a harsh decision as well, I think, in my opinion. I it was, but it was a bad decision from him. So I don't think he can complain, even if a red yeah. was probably a little harsh. Yeah, but, and that's yeah. why the reason a lot of Inter fans, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you know, like there's a lot of clamor in the Inter clan fan base to kind of, you know, replace Andanovic. And a lot of people won or, you know, they put forward as uh, Dragovsky as their number one replacement. I've, I don't know. I've never been a particularly big fan of, of Dragovsky. Do you think, do you think he's Inter material? Uh, no, definitely not. Stay away from. Yes, him. I'm right. <laughs> we don't know. We Fiorentina don't. We don't. We want to keep him forever. Don't. No one else can have him. We love. No, come on. <laughs> I, I, I love Drunkovsky. I think he's a fantastic goalkeeper. Uh, he's still very young. He's what 20, 23, 24 still. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's going. He's only going to get better. Uh, mm. I, I think that particularly he needs to get better with his feet. Yeah. Uh, he had a couple of couple of moments against Genoa. Uh, what would that be? Saturday that were a little bit spooky mm -hmm. but uh as a as a pure shot stopper i think he's as good as anyone in the league frankly yeah uh, yeah definitely the one thing i think he struggles on besides his distribution is he can he can struggle also a little bit with uh with shots from distance but i think also that's something for a young goalkeeper he's going to improve get a better understanding of his angles get a better yeah. understanding of where he needs to be and his positioning I in the goal but no, I, I think he's only going to get better. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, usually, I'm. It's not like I don't rate him as a keeper. It's just like I have 
it's, it's the, I think it's the aesthetic, the look. I think you, <laughs> you, you, oh, can't be, you can't be an interkeeper and look like a hobo, in my opinion. Oh, no. oh, he's clean. He's cleaned up a little this year. He's trimmed it up. He's trimmed it up. He looks oh, very, man. very stylish. I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's a personal, <laughs> personal preference. Personal preference. There. You know what? Yeah. That, all right. All right. All right. I'll, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one again. Y'all can stay away, and I won't be very upset. <laughs> yeah but um yeah as, as we were saying like you're you're, you're coming into this in, in in good form um italiano talk to me about italiano how how are you feeling about him and what what are you making of the tactics um in terms of uh obviously we know what italiano is all about possession-based football but are you playing well are you, i know you're getting the results but are you actually playing well uh I think right now it's still a little bit of a mixed bag. I mean, mm -hmm. you'll notice Fiorentina hasn't kept a clean sheet mm -hmm. yet, conceding very late against uh, uh, Torino and then giving up a 98th-minute penalty <laughs> against Genoa, which is a little bit irritating. Uh, conceded six goals so far, so that's a concern. Uh, three of them have been with a quarter hour less left in the game, so I think that's... Mm -hmm. I think there's definitely some concern that Italiano's approach, which has a very high line, mm -hmm. uh, nonstop pressure. I think the work without the ball has maybe impressed me more than anything. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so playing that high line, I think that the defenders in particular get a little tired and you start dealing with some mental exhaustion a little bit and they tend mm -hmm. to switch off towards the end of games, which against a veteran side like Inter definitely worries me. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah over, overall, I think he's been just fantastic breath of fresh breath, breath of fresh air i swear i speak this language uh <laughs> and is uh and yeah he's just been really good keeping players moving the ball around against genoa it was soaking wet uh looked more like a water polo setup than a than one for calcio and it was great uh the team even then didn't resort to hoofing it long to vlaovic which can work they kept kept it on the carpet kept moving mm -hmm. it quickly mm -hmm. and it worked. They got their two goals, despite Vlaovic having an off night. And I think that shows how much the players have bought into his philosophy and bought into his system and how it's working. There's obviously still a lot of wrinkles. There's some guys still getting up to speed, especially after two years of Beppe ball. But <laughs> yeah. but I think I think they're well on the way. I think, yeah, by midseason, this is this has the potential to be a very, very good Serie A team. Um, <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure that Drogovsky is taken, right? Oh yeah, he is. He's yeah. he's uh, Bart is doing fine. I would say uh, <laughs> you can you can turn to Google for that. I won't go any further. Bart, yeah, is I think, I think his, his beard came afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I, I'm really not comfortable with all this anti beard propaganda on this. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's I, all I'm, I'm not, saying. Not anti beard. It's the it's the, it's the <laughs> <laughs> the sheer size of it and the unkept look oh, that, that that bothers me. But, um, I think no, we're veering we're veering too far away from uh, from football. Apologies, right, right. it's my sorry, it's, sorry, it's sorry. my fault. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm just looking at your stats uh, on who scored, and according to who scored, you've got average of 56.4 percent possession, which makes you the fifth highest in the league in terms of average possession, higher than than Inter as well. Um, the, which is obviously expected under Italiano, who likes to keep possession. Would you say that coming in in the Inter match, would you say you would ex you're expecting to have more of the ball than Inter, or would you say it would be fifty fifty or Inter to have more of the ball? I would expect Fiorentina to have a slight edge there, uh, mm -hmm. playing at home, and this will only be their second home game so far. Uh, and then also, I think that. <laughs> Inzaghi is likely to. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I think yeah. Inzaghi is probably going to be more than happy to uh, sit a little bit deeper because Fiorentina have looked a little bit vulnerable on the counter to me, yeah. uh, especially at the fullback spots. And so I, I think that tempting them forward, if were I Simone Inzaghi, which clearly I'm not, <laughs> uh, I would. That's probably what I would do is is try to invite them forward a little bit, and that would that'll mean letting them have have the ball at the back and really build from deep a bit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think that, that would, that's what i would do as well if i was a um italiano which i'm not <laughs> <laughs> very good very good <laughs> <laughs> the one thing i really want to talk about with you was um do some so you know i'm a 
I'm a massive fan. I've been on the Vlahovic uh, train since before he even made his first uh, Serie A appearance. Because I don't know, yeah. I saw that clip of him in the Coppa Italia and I thought, wow, this guy's left foot um, is, is, is amazing. And since then, he's gone on to you know become you know what he is now. How much of a surprise was it that you managed to keep him in the summer? Uh, I wasn't actually as surprised. I think once uh, Harry Kane, it became clear that he was staying put. There was no real question that Dushan was going to stay. Mm-hmm. And even before that, I was a little skeptical. Rocco Camiso has shown that he's willing to hang on to his players for an extra year with Chiesa last season. Uh, I think the bigger thing, though, is that with the cor- with coronavirus depressing the Mercato pretty significantly, we're seeing, I mean, look how many big names moved for not as much money as you'd expect this past mm-hmm. season. Uh, I think a lot of agents are are encouraging clients to stay put, especially younger players until those transfer fees can shoot up and the uh just the the economy around the game has recovered a little bit Mm -hmm. and so i think it made a lot of sense for vlaovic to stay put uh he clearly he's got a good relationship with comiso it seems like he really enjoys working under italiano it seems like he's getting on the same page as a lot of his teammates who are also younger on Mm -hmm. more or less the same timeline this next year is the real question uh Vlaovic is reportedly working on a contract extension right now. It sounds like they're through most of the details from what I've heard. Oh, uh, the, the only thing left is the buyout clause, which his camp wants around $50 million and Fiorentino wants uh, significantly higher, let's say. Imagine. Uh, so I, I think that there's a decent chance that gets ironed out and then that he leaves in a year, maybe two, if, if Fiorentina ends up in Europe, which I think they have a pretty good chance to do Mm -hmm. uh but yeah i mean he's he's i would say the best young striker in the world uh non mbappe holland division Uh, apologies to lautaro martinez fans (laughs) i I think i do i think i think vlaovic might be a better and more complete player Ooh, interesting Mm -hmm. interesting Mm -hmm. well Yes, yeah. a good, it's a good segue there. It's very smooth, uh, Tito. You did it without even knowing what I was going to bring up, which was Lautaro Martinez. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. The, battle, the battle of the young gunmen. Um, and Lautaro has something to try to get to this match. Um, Lautaro Martinez is one goal away from equaling uh, Lothar Mateus and Samuel Eto's record at Inter. So he's on 52 goals right now, which wow. he scored against uh, Bologna. And so... With 53 against Fiorentina, if he scores there, he would get, you know, into a very nice uh, company with Eto and Mateus <laughs> and those types of guys. So he's gonna be he's gonna be gunning down for that for that record, Tito. I'm sorry to say. Ah, well, I mean, Fiorentina's defense is a great outfit to get a a, a record-setting goal against. So I wouldn't bet against him. I actually, uh, I, I if I were the betting type, I would back him to score here. I think this is very much his kind of game, uh, especially mm-hmm. running at a, at a high defense and looking to get in behind. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't get me wrong. I think Lautaro is a wonderful player. I think he's, I would say he is the second best young striker in Serie A. <laughs> but I, I think that Dushan just brings physical attributes that no one else has. I think he, uh, Vlaovic has also gotten, he's gotten beefier, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he does looks look. Like he looks like he's. Yeah. I think he, from oh. what I hear, and you, you could confirm that. I've heard that he's quite a gym rat as well. Like he's just he's one of those kind of Haaland, yeah. Ronaldo type kind of obsessed guys who like he doesn't really go out and you know party or you know he he just wants yeah. to focus on his football and his physique. Yeah, he, I think that was his project this summer was getting big, and he uh, he succeeded. There's there's more of him now in a good way, and it's <laughs> it's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's why whoever buys him has to pay more just because there's actually more of it physically. You know? <laughs> yeah, maybe a, maybe a per kilogram, uh, maybe a per kilogram <laughs> fee we can do. Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I want to actually, let, let, I want to see what the chat says. Obviously, it's going to be into bias in the chat, but usually my my chat is quite unbiased in terms of their footballing opinion. So comment in the chat. Let's see who's better in your, your opinion, Dusan Vlahovic or Lautaro Martinez, and we'll... Uh, We'll put it up. We'll pull it up in a in a minute to see. <laughs> don't 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 try to you know influence anyone, Tito. <laughs> but uh, moving on to potential uh, lineups, whilst people um, comment in the in the chat, I'm going to bring up the sport media set uh, predicted lineups, and you can tell me whether they're accurate or not, Tito. Um, can you see that? 
Sure can, yeah. So we'll do the, the Fiorentina ones first. Uh, Dragovski, Odriozola, Martinez Quarta, Milenkovic, Biragi at the back. Is that what you're expecting back line wise? Pretty much, yeah. I think there's some concern that Alvaro Odriozola might have picked up a bit of a knock. Mm-hmm. I cramped up pretty pretty badly at the end of uh, the the Genoa game and had to be subbed off. And there's, I heard a uh, report this morning that he might might not make it, might not recover in time, might have suffered a little bit of a training setback. Yeah, which means with uh, Lorenzo Venuti also hurt, the Ooh. right back would probably be your old friend Marco Benassi, who uh, who actually played it right back for the last ten minutes against Genoa when Odriozola went off, wow. which uh, was a surreal thing. So that I would say there's maybe a twenty percent chance of a Benassi fullback sighting, but mm-hmm. I would I would say that's probably the correct defense. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we, as Interisti, would like to see that happen. <laughs> um, I, I don't blame you. <laughs> not that Odrio Zola. I, I watched a little. I watched the highlights of the um, of the Genoa match, and there was one bit where he was like, Odrio Zola was. I don't know what he was doing at the back. It was some passing sequence. Oh, where was, good lord! Yeah, that was miserable. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's that's probably an area that I think uh, Inter should target. Definitely that that right hand side of yours. Absolutely. I think that uh, I know Ivan Perisic hasn't been at his best so far this year, but the prospect of Perisic running at uh, Odrothola is not one which uh, particularly excites me. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Good news for you guys in terms of keeping Milenkovic as well, signing that one year extension, right? Yeah. I, again, I think it was just because uh, the money wasn't there for him to move. I mm-hmm. think the best offer that he got was West Ham. Ugh. Uh, that would have been a travesty. I hate when like really good Serie A players end up at, like mid-table, stop. you know, Premier League clubs. Oh, it's just yeah. a, such a waste. And D- David Moyes would wait. Yeah, would waste him. I think. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm very, very glad that he stayed. Uh, although I'm pretty sure he's gone next year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, he's having him, and he he was rested last uh, last time out, so he's going to be fresh and he's going to be ready. Yeah, and obviously Lord Baragi, your captain uh, at left back. Uh, uh, another favorite, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, unfortunately there aren't really any options behind him. Uh so it's it's going to be Captain Chris. <laughs> and in midfield, uh, that looks like a quite a nice midfield. Now, I mean, of course, uh, how's Castrovilli doing by the way? If anyone doesn't know, he hit his head right against the uh, against Genoa and he, went, he was hospitalized due to a head trauma. It was, uh, I don't think it was his head from what I could tell. It, uh, from what I've heard and saw, it was his ribs. He, it oh. was so bad that he, he was chasing a cross at the back post. Sorry, and, I, got it. I got it wrong. <clears throat> yeah, no, it just slid and couldn't hit the brakes and just went into that, went into the woodwork at about 100 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, they thought he broke some ribs. From what I've heard, the scans and the x rays came up negative. He's okay, but he's definitely not going to be playing in this one. Uh, looks like he's pretty shaken up. Maybe get him back for Udinese at the weekend, but honestly, I just I'd rather see him recover and be healthy because that that was a scary moment. Yeah, no, I, I didn't get to see the video. I just saw the picture, so I just assumed it was the head. Um, so that's why I wrongly yeah, assumed. No. But I hope hope, he, hope he's okay soon. Um, Torreira, man, he's a he's a player I like, and again, yeah. another one that I feel like wasted. Uh, you know, wasted his uh, last two or three years being at Arsenal. Um, but how how is he looking uh, in your first few matches? I think he's still playing his way into fitness. Mm-hmm. I, I know that he spent a pretty good chunk of the summer in quarantine, so he wasn't able to to really get his get his levels up. Uh, he's only made one start so far, and he was a bit uneven. In fairness, it was against Atalanta, who are going to run any defensive midfielder ragged with their movement between the lines. Uh, so, but I think he's also still developing those relationships, understanding where he's supposed to be in relation to to the rest of his team. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I think this could be a great game for him. I mean, his first two Fiorentina games being at Atalanta and then against reigning champions Inter. Welcome back <laughs> to Italy, man. Yikes. Baptism of fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm. I, I I like him though. I think he's going to be a. I think he's going to be a really really good player for the Viola. Yeah, no, I really like him. I I was always um I would love him as you know Vice Brozovic or something like that. Um, what what happened to Amrabat? Is he still there? What, what's happening with Amrabat? He's still there. He uh he started the year a little bit injured. Uh, 
I think there were, there was a lot of chatter that he might be on his way out. He missed most of training camp, getting a a, a minor surgery, so he didn't really train in preseason. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I mean, obviously, if you're hurt, you got to get done whatever you need to get done. But it did seem a little bit strange to me that he waited until the very end of the summer for this procedure instead of getting it done early and meeting up with the team. Yeah, uh, yeah. he did. He made an appearance off the bench against Genoa, so I think that he's working his way back to fitness still. Uh, the real joy, though, is that with him and Ricardo Saponata both on the team, they're both bald, both have beards, <laughs> roughly the same build. And uh, the commentators here in the U.S. on uh, Paramount Plus and CBS have been incapable of telling them apart. It's been the most <laughs> surreal thing. Uh, a couple weeks ago, yeah, oh yeah, please look this up. There's a picture of them getting subbed in together that's very funny. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, like, I get it, but also they're wearing numbers. You can tell which one is which. Come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Im- imagine if Borja Valero was still there. I, if only. Well, and then you know, Vincenzo Italiano is a <laughs> yeah. bald white guy with a beard. Yeah, uh, yeah. Two of the physios are bald white guys with beards. It's it's been very fun watching that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, no, I think Amrabat will be back. He's just working his way back right now. Yeah, yeah. Bonaventura looks like he's started off in in good form. I think two goals, sorry, one goal and two assists. Yeah. Um, and uh, Duncan, I've always thought like he's a very underrated player, man. Like obviously another former Inter in the in the ranks for you guys. Uh, it seems like well, you got like three. Um, yeah, Benassi, yeah. Biragi, Duncan, uh, Christian yeah. Kwame used to be one, and he's left. <laughs> oh, he's, so he, he's he's still on the books though. He's it's a it's a dry loan he's on at Anderlecht, so he could be back next year. Yeah, yeah. maybe we're just little into her now. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you no, make I, of Duncan, man? He looks he looks quite good at the start of the season. I I love Alfred Duncan. He's he's like a bowling ball coated in rubber. He's got a very low center of gravity and just bounces around through midfield. <laughs> Uh, his passing isn't always quite as accurate as you'd like, but yeah. his, his energy, he presses extremely well, works very hard without the ball, which for Vincenzo Italiano is really important. Uh, and he's, I mean, as, y'all, as you might recall, he's got a wicked shot with his left, uh, very nearly scored against Genoa. It took, a, frankly, a, a tremendous save from Salvatore de Sirigu to, to keep him off the off the score sheet. But yeah, I'm I'm so happy that Alfred Duncan is back and and doing well, especially because uh, off the field, his his work against uh, the racism that's so pervasive in Serie A has been really really inspirational. And it he's one of those guys you just have to root for him no matter what. And so I'm 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 thrilled that he's back and succeeding. Mm, I didn't know about that, uh, Duncan. I'll have to check out his uh, social media and stuff. Yeah, um, I always felt like yeah, I always felt like he's. I don't know. He's been quite underrated. Like last year, he was loaned out to Cagliari, um, and he was out of the team for a while, wasn't he? Like I just feel like he's not yeah. been. He's not really received the the right rating throughout his career. I feel like he's he deserves to be, you know, a starter for a club like Fiorentina. I I agree with you completely. I think he's just yeah been underrated and overlooked for his entire career, and he's. I'm hoping that this is the year he really shows what he can do. Yeah, yeah, Inter were always like almost every year we'll link with him just because you know the UEFA list for Europe is very handy for us. Um, yeah, I've, I've always been like, yeah, if you know, if you can get this guy for cheap, you should. He's better than Gagliardini to me as a backup. I yeah, I would, <laughs> I would. I, I've never seen him miss on the goal line at least. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But uh, um, yeah, we'd like to keep um, him if you don't mind. Uh, no, yeah, it's fine now. We've, we've got enough guys in midfield now. <laughs> Fair. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, up front, is the here is saying Saponara starting with Sotil. Is the, is that or no Nico Gonzalez, no Calihon? Uh, I think that's probably true. Uh, Nico Gonzalez picked up a little bit of a knock, got subbed off at halftime. I mean, the the way that he plays lends itself to he get he gets hurt a lot. Um, uh, mm-hmm. he's the most fouled player on a permanent basis in Serie A right now. So he just takes right. a kicking every game. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's, he's uh, adapted to Serie A quite quickly. He's, yeah, he's a he's a fantastic player, but I do worry about his his ability to stay healthy uh, <laughs> with, with the booting he takes. Uh, they, he might be fit enough for the bench, so he could get maybe a half hour. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I think it'll have to be Sotil and Saponara for sure. I'd actually expect Sotil on the right and Saponara on the left. Although, yeah, you can say, uh, and yeah, Callejon is 
an old man and I don't think he can start two games in four days. <laughs> I'm surprised he's still there to be fair. I thought he would have been gone this summer. I, you know what? I don't think he's going to get paid anywhere else nearly mm. as much as he's getting at Fiorentina. He's the top earner there, which is, a, a, that is the right response. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, good Lord. Yeah. So he's, he's basically unmovable right now. Mm -hmm. uh, he, you know, he's very experienced. He knows how to play on the right side of a four-three-three. Yeah, uh, he still knows how to do that far post run, though. He he knows how to get there, but he's there. Have been probably four or five times already this year where he's been a step slow getting there and missed mm -hmm. what were tap ins. I think mm -hmm. uh, largely because he's older than I am, and I'm sure he's still <laughs> much much faster than I am. I'm sure he's got way more pace than I ever have, but I bet you it's not. I bet you it's a lot closer now than it was a couple years ago. Yeah, I, I can I can bet that. Um, what about what about Satil? Um, I made this video um, before the start of the season called "One Player to Watch Out for Every Team," and I went for kind of a little hipster pick when it came to Fiorentina. I went for for Satil just because um, whenever I watched him for Cagliari and for Fiorentina, like his directness, his dribbling ability is really something quite unique about him. I think as an yeah. Italian player. Um, what, what, how is he playing this season, and do you have any expectations from him this season? I great pick. I, I love Ricky Sotil. One, he's just an outrageously handsome man. Oh and, yeah, this, yeah, he's like he's like uh, you know carved from. The, he's like looks like one of those Greek gods, doesn't he? I, yeah, he's just, he's in. Oh my goodness, yeah. Uh, sorry, let me. Uh, <laughs> we we uh, veered away once again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he is a dribbler. I think he I think he is already one of the best dribblers in Serie A. If you look at his stats as a ball carrier, he his progressive carries, his ability to beat a man, he wins fouls at a truly alarming rate. Uh, but he hasn't quite put it all together. I think his his decision making in the final third definitely needs a bit of work. And I, I think a lot of that is just because he's still young. He's twenty two, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he's never gotten really a chance in Serie A. He was a standout for the Primavera and extremely productive there as a goal scorer and a creator. Uh, same for the Azzurini, very productive as a scorer and a creator. It just hasn't followed him into the into the top flight yet. And I think that's because no one's ever given him a really extended run as a starter. Yeah. And given him that confidence that young players need to go out and make mistakes. Every, every time he plays right now, I... I I think you can really tell that he feels the burden that if he messes up, maybe he won't get to play again for a week or two. And so I think, I think Italiano, one of the things he needs to do is take him aside and say, Hey, we're going to use you. You're going to play a lot of minutes, go out there, express yourself, do what you can do. And I think that's what he needs more than anything else. The talent is there for sure. Uh, I've, I've talked to people in the club who thinks, who think that he's going to be, the next really, really good international level winger off the off the production line at the academy there after Bernardeschi and Chiesa, and I don't I don't see any reason why he can't be. But yeah, I think if he gets gets that confidence, gets that chance, gets that support, he's going to be unstoppable. And I'm yeah, and with with his looks, I'm so excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no i uh, i agree i agree I, i'm excited about him yeah he's just a unique profile i don't you don't see many there's a lot of you know talented italian players but he's kind of he's got the athleticism about him as well yeah. which is a little bit rare in italian players yeah and yeah i think he's one of the few out and out wingers that italy has produced yeah. I, I, I think that i mean not to make this too football manager right but I think that he tends to produce a lot of inside forwards, a lot of guys who want to play on the so-called wrong side. Yeah, yeah. And cut inside, and he's very happy staying wide right and and getting down the line a lot, like Chiesa is, honestly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe so it's what your youth team was teaching is like you know we're we're doing proper wingers in the in this I, in this <laughs> academy. I mean, you know, it worked when he was there with Chiesa. They were uh, they were the best Primavera team in Italy there for a few years. So I think whatever they were whatever they were putting in the water there was definitely working. <laughs> uh, Surprise! Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that's your team. Obviously, Vlahovic up front. There's no arguments uh, about that one, uh, <laughs> nope. unless uh, Kokorin uh, is, is oh, starting. God, <laughs> Ugh. 
Uh, I saw, I saw, I don't know if it was your tweet or no, but it said like uh, something about how quickly Cochrane was moving or what, what, what was this? Some, it, was, it was a funny tweet I saw about Cochrane at the weekend. Oh, he's, I, well, I mean, he's a criminal. So, <laughs> well, first of all, yeah, he, no, yeah, we're not actually joking, guys. He is actually a criminal. Yes, he's served prison time in Russia yeah. <laughs> uh, for assaulting a government official with like physically, but also yelling racial things and then also uh, attacking someone and doing permanent brain damage to them. So the guy is just a loathsome human being as far as I'm concerned. And also yeah. he's a terrible player. So. <laughs> just to, just just to go alongside it. Yeah, can't stand him. Want him gone yesterday. Yeah, yeah, like I can agree. But yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the Fiorentina team. Uh, oh, moving on to the predicted lineups Ooh. for the Inter team. So... As I've put in the scroller down below, Vidal and uh, Tuku Correa are out of this match. Tuku Correa picked up a slight knock against um, against uh, Bologna, which is not going to be too serious, but apparently he's still feeling pain. Um, De Silvestri doing, uh, doing a, a little favor for you guys there. Ah, one of our former players, awfully nice of him. <laughs> so it looks like he's back to the Jeko Martinez partnership. Um, Inzaghi said that he would have liked to have arrested Jeko completely against Bologna. Uh, similarly to as you were saying with Callejon, he's uh, he's very old, uh, so <laughs> it's uh, it's not ideal that he has he's having to play. He's actually playing a lot more than I expected. I didn't expect yeah. him to be playing this much. He's looked uh, good too, from what I've seen. Oh yeah, no, no, he's definitely looked good. Um, but I'm just worried about him. I don't want to burn him out <laughs> at his yeah. age. Yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, uh, the partnership with Martinez hasn't quite, you know, it doesn't look like it's quite there yet. But of course, it takes time for these things to to develop with it, with Lukaku. It felt like it was almost instant with Lukaku, but I guess they were kind of, they had that off the field connection as well with Lukaku. So I think it might take a little bit of a while with the Martinez and Dzeko. And with respect, Lukaku is just a different level from Ed and Dzeko, I think. Yeah. Which helps too. I mean... You could probably put me next to Romelu Lukaku and I would score a couple of goals in Serie A. Uh, what a player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. If you can keep up with him on the counter-attack. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but Lukaku, wait, he's too quick. <laughs> yeah, uh, the late arriving runs in the box, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that, um, that looks like a great... I mean, for having to rotate heavily and play a bunch of backups, that's, <laughs> that's quite an eleven. I yeah, I think, I think the rotation happened more in the Bologna match. I think we're going back to kind of our stronger lineup uh, in this match because it looks like the predicted lineups is putting Perisic in here. Um, but I would have liked to continue. Actually, I put up a, a poll on my uh, Twitter to see what Interistia is saying, who should start at left wing back. And the final result wow. is actually is a little bit closer than I expected. Uh, Di Marco with 56% over Perisic. Um and I agree. I agree. I think Di Marco should get his sec second start in because I still feel more confident in Perisic in, you know, all due respect to Fiorentina, but in in a bigger match against Atalanta, which is our next one, I would rather, you know, start yeah. Perisic in that one and keep and also just to keep faith with Di Marco. You know, he played well against uh, Bologna. Um, yeah. And as we saw, as we said, uh, your right side is a little bit of a weakness at the moment, depending on. Yeah, I whoever plays that's kind of a weakness at the moment. Yeah. So I would and Di Marco is really good going forward. Um better than Paris, sure, yeah. I would say. So that that's my that would be my option in terms of uh starting left wing back. And on the right side, I would continue with the uh, with Dumfries, who had a great, great debut. I don't know if he tuned in Tito, but he he um gave Aaron Hickey some nightmares uh, against Bologna. Yeah. I I'm not excited at the prospect of Denzel Dumfries running at Cristiano Biragi. I'm sure that you can imagine how that's going to go, mm -hmm. uh, which is not well, I don't think, for, for my people. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, I mean, just his, I mean, I, I know that it's the stereotype and I hate to say it, but his just pure pace is going to be something that Biragi struggles with. I think he's also really, really intelligent with his movement and how he times those runs, especially towards the back post. Yeah. Uh, saw it at the Euros with the Netherlands. And I, I don't trust Barangi a whole lot in those situations, and that I think that's going to be a serious issue, uh, especially if you have Demarco on the other wing and his excellent crossing. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah, see that yeah. being a. Yeah, I'll, I'll be taking some antacids. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> we've got we've got some love for you for your voice, as uh, Bjorn said. You should get into a recording audiobook. I agree. <laughs>
Thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> and it seems like the uh, the chat got involved when we asked the, who do you prefer between or who is better between Lautaro and oh, Vlaovic. Yes. Uh, so we've got now Biggie who says Lautaro is better. Arnav says Vlahovic. Mohamed says El Toro. So we've got three for El Toro, uh, one for Vlahovic, two for Vlahovic here. Yuha says uh, Vlahovic. Um, I think... Uh, yeah, I think Lautaro's won it due to the bias in the in the in, in the chat here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think that Vlaovic hit that height though that to me was much more impressive than what Lautaro did last year. Vlaovic was doing that all by himself in a a team that was fundamentally broken. My goodness, that yeah, was yeah. That, that's all I'll say. That that Lautaro wouldn't be able to do what Vlaovic did in that um in that team in last year with Yakini. I don't think he would be able to do that. I think that's that's what really stands out to me. I'm, again, I'm not I'm not going to come into your house and uh, and push this too hard, but yeah, for me that's very much the case. Yeah, no, of course, and as everyone's saying, there are two different types of forwards. I think um, for sure, yeah, we're just oh. having a little a little bit of banter, but oh, there's yeah. no there's no real comparison at the moment, especially with Lautaro plays in a in a two as well. Vlahovic now plays on his own, yeah, so I, a different role. I will say, I think seeing them together. Uh, if y'all want to sell Lautaro to us, that would be great. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I think they would actually make a fantastic combination. Uh, yeah. I will speak to the, the penalty thing, too. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at Vlaovic's non-penalty XG from last year, it's still one of the highest in the league. Also, the fact that those I know that people not taking penalties, one, you still got to score it. Two, he won, I think more than half of the penalties that he scored last year. So I would right. say that still he's doing fine. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, as Costa says, a penalty is a penalty. Like, you know, yeah. people, as I, I, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I don't, I don't like it when people criticize, you know, Ronaldo or whether it's, you know, anyone that takes a lot of penalties. At the end of the day, we've seen. Still got to finish them. Yeah, you still have yeah. to finish them. Immobile. Uh, like it's not easy. We've seen so many people miss him, and we as Interisti should know. Since you know, now that Lukaku has left, he had a hundred percent conversion rate. Now, whoever's going to be, I'm, I don't feel as comfortable. Uh, whoever is going to be, which is probably going to be El Toro. You think? So we'll you think? Uh, you think him over Jacko? Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be because he he's he's been put as the main man now into the team. Like you know, they're giving him the big contract. They're giving him the six million a season, whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got the number 10, you know, he's the main man now, so it has to be him. And I think Jekyll didn't even used to take them at Roma either. Not too often, but I I mean, just with the, I know that he's on a pretty big contract, and I thought with his experience, maybe, but fair. Yeah, we'll see. We'll find out. We'll find out when we yeah. get one. Well, hope, hopefully uh, <laughs> hopefully not hopefully not tomorrow. I'd, I'd love <laughs> to see that uh, remain a mystery for another few days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, as everyone says, a goal is a goal, no matter what. <laughs> Duncan better than the white pog button <laughs> and Gagliardini, I'm guessing. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> We've got some Gagliardini defenders in the chat as well. <laughs> oh man, poor poor Berto. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh yeah, man. Um, what else we got in the comments? Let me just quickly see. Yeah, there would be, yeah, he was my pick. Honestly, Tito. Um, when we saw Lukaku, I said go all in for Vlahovic, left footed, similar, you know, in terms of profile to obviously maybe not as good at holding up. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, but that, he was my pick, man. I was like, go all in. Obviously, we didn't have the budget for it. Uh, we yeah. barely had the budget for Jekko, but in the end, um, <laughs> in yeah. the end, it didn't happen. But I wouldn't. I'm not saying he's gonna end up here, but I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up at Inter one day. Oh, I, oh. Better than better than if he you goes to Juve. Come on, better than if you know, Yeah, that's Juve. true. If the, if he's got to go to one of the big teams in Serie A, uh, I think Inter is maybe the least offensive one for me so yeah that's fair uh, uh damn no career and vidal major loss for us there hoping to pull off the win yeah um finishing off my uh the like, predicted lineup for inter yes it's, it's a good it's, it's a strong lineup um i'm very happy with that uh yeah. hakan coming back in after vecino was rotated against um bologna and i'm happy hakan's been i've, I've been vocal on my channel i don't know why Maybe because it's cool to hate on him because of how Melanisti used to treat him, but I don't really see why he's getting slandered by Interisti already. Uh, he's, he's, he did really well in the first match, and I don't think he did that bad against Real Madrid that he deserved all that slander. So I'm happy to see him come back uh, into into the team, and I feel like that is our best midfield right now. 
Brozovic, Barella and Hakan. And I think that midfield can, um, you know, beat your midfield, so to say, matching up. Yeah, that's fair. I think that can definitely create some problems. Yeah. I, I think that will be some fun matchups, though. Uh, Torreira, oh, yeah, yeah. Brozovic, Barella, Duncan, uh, Chalianogu, and uh, Bonaventura. Those are, in some ways, they're all kind of similar players. I think you can make a very fair argument that the Fiorentina trio is maybe a level below their counterparts there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and stylistically, I think that'll be a really, really good matchup. It, I mean, yeah. just fun to watch. Yeah, I think physically, your midfield is definitely a little bit stronger. I would say, you know, as you said, Duncan is like a wrecking ball. <laughs> Torreira, if he's up to full speed, you know, he's a little pit bull as well. And Bonaventura is yeah. the engine. Although, also, Jack is, what, 32 now, 33? And he'll be playing his second 90 in four days. So Yeah, yeah, worrying. It's creep up for him. Yeah. But defensively, we know we know what's the deal. The best defense in Serie A. Yeah, uh, that's Rodrigo. ridiculous. Yeah, that's, that's just a ridiculous defense. That back three is incredible. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I am not super excited for that. Um, I guess all I can really hope for is that as a Fiorentina fan, is that Perisic has a Perisic moment and lets someone in the back. Uh, I, I do think that Fiorentina have, I mean, obviously, not a lot of wins over Inter recently, right? But mm -hmm. I think they've historically played up to, to the Nerazzurri pretty well in recent yeah, years. Yeah, I mean, well, if it's you look lot, at really, if you look at really, really recent, then it's not been great. Um, I mean, in, in my mind, you're right. In my mind, I see Fiorentina as like kind of a bogey team, but then I looked at this record and I just remember like, oh yeah, last two seasons yeah. it's been pretty one-sided. Oh, very much. But I, I think that it's been, I mean, on the in the scoreline, you could see never yeah. more than a two-goal margin, usually one. I think I think Fiorentina do a great job of raising their level to uh, to Inter Milan every time and obviously falling short because let's let's not pretend like these are two teams on the same level right now right but yeah. but yeah i think that'll be a really fun one <laughs> and there was a tweet that made me laugh earlier it was like <laughs> fiorentina versus the other teams and then fiorentina against inter <laughs> that's very good uh, that's very good i like that <laughs> Yeah, um, it's, 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 it's definitely true, though, as you're saying. It does feel like Fiorentina seem to have it seems to have that extra bit of bite when, it, especially yeah, when it comes to Juventus and Inter, there seems to be the extra level of bite with the Fiorentina. I think it is, yeah. Which is which is funny. I've never, I mean, against Juve it makes sense, but against Inter, I've never really felt any particularly strong distaste among the among the supporters for for Interisti. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, and of course, yeah, as uh, Leo Hero says, it, it we'll it will see in terms of how the match develops within Zaghi. We've seen recently that he's very heavy-handed with his um with his substitutions. Um, you know, he he he's got five and he uses all five. Yeah, and he uses them by like the seventieth minute. <laughs> he's not he's not very patient with those. So we'll yeah. see. But that's the thing with Inter this season. We've got so much um so much option depth. off the bench. Yeah, yeah, just um, a yeah, it's such a deep squad. Even even with Correa and Vidal out, that's such a deep squad yeah exactly let me just pull up the actual both benches that we both have um yeah i mean inter we've um i was unhappy with like the lack of rotation at the back against bologna because now they're starting again but they did get some rest in the second half um the vry and bastoni got some rest so hopefully screenia can get some rest in the second half of this um uh, well, but it's not like they were doing too much in a single <laughs> win, right? Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, they were probably <laughs> ball, ball watching for most of it. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, as we said, like you can bring off Di Marco if Perisic starts. You can bring on Darmian. Uh, Gagliardini will ignore Vecino. Uh, Alexis Sanchez as well. And people forget about this guy, but he, the way he came on against yeah. Bologna, I think he reminded people of you know what he can add off the bench as well. Yeah, great player, yeah. Yeah, Satriano is an interesting talent that you know definitely want to keep an eye on. Um, and with you guys as well, not not too bad of a bench to be honest. Um, apart from the the criminal that will ignore at the bottom. Um, oh yeah, Nastasic man, he's a he's a he's a, he's a, he's a comeback right? Like what, he is, yeah, nine I years. Ago. This guy was so highly rated, like you know, seven eight years ago, and then he went to Man City, and then yeah, don't know what happened yeah, there. I Nine years ago, uh, he had a fantastic debut season. Uh, sold him to City for I think twenty-five million plus Stefan Savic, and he washed out at City. Had a pretty good career, and then uh, 
was at Schalke when all the things that happened at Schalke happened and came back. It's, I, I, I mean, it's just, it's wonderful to see him come back. I think he was very excited and adding another Serbian international with Milenkovic and Vlaovic, I think makes a lot of sense too. Uh, hasn't, he hasn't put, made his debut yet in his second go round. Probably won't for a little while, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's, it's just really fun seeing him back. Yeah, no, I always rated him. I always, uh, yeah, whenever it was FIFA, I used to always buy Nastasic because he, uh, uh, I don't know, I always liked him, but it's funny seeing him back. How old is he now? Oh, he's, I think he's only 29, which wow. blows my mind. Yeah, he, he broke through when he was 18 for Fiorentina and had that game where he kept uh, Zlatan in his pocket for 90 minutes and everyone went, who the hell is this kid? <laughs> That's when that's when your scouting was like top notch, you know, when you had your Jovetic, Savic, uh, you know, this guy, Nastavic. The Ramadani connection, yeah. Pantaleo Corvino had that locked down. It was fun. It was fun while it lasted. <laughs> but yeah, Tito, let's get into the match predictions now. Boca here says, oh, he's, he's, he's looking very positive. Um, I'm guessing flying off the cuff of our 6-1 win. But you know, guys, Interisti, you got to remember, Let's think back to every single big win that Inter had over the last few years, and usually the the match after has never has never been good. Um, so I'm 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 gonna be a little bit not negative, but a little bit more cautious with my with with my prediction. Ricky here is going for a four uh, two score prediction. Um, I'm guessing for Inter because uh, Fiorentina are the home team, so it would be <laughs> seems like a seems like a safe bet there. Yeah. yeah. Nick Snox, the usual, he's always uh, kind of careful like me as well. He's 2-1 Inter or 2-2. It'll be tight. Um, yeah, well, what do you think, in the, uh, Tito? You go first. Uh, uh, because I have to be an optimist here, right? That's the whole joke. I'll call it a 2-2. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think that it's going to be a much more open game than we expect. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Fiorentina's defense, again, is just a little bit ragged, especially right now. Uh, Venuti Pirad's solidity that Odriozola doesn't and Biragi against Dumfries and Lautaro. Uh, <laughs> so oh, say, come on. Yeah, so I think I think that Inter are definitely going to score goals. I have Lautaro down for one and then another one probably from distance uh, Chalinoglu maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, that said, I, I don't think that Vlaovic is going to have two bad games in a row. So I think he's definitely going to get on track. He's He's so angry all the time. <laughs> I, I, I think that's going to boil over and he's going to get another goal. Uh, he, he does like playing against Inter Milan quite a bit. Mm. So I yeah, see I remember him. when he scored that banger against us in the last few minutes. Yeah, uh, and I, I could see Fiorentina getting another one. The, uh, the rest of the team is really starting to produce right now. Uh, Bonaventura pr- provides some thrust. I wouldn't be shocked if Ricky Sotil got him, finally got himself on track. Mm-hmm. So I'll call it two two, but I'm saying that as a as a complete homer here. Realistically, Inter are big favorites in the betting houses for a reason, right? Mm-hmm. Like, who are we kidding? Yeah, yeah. Everyone seems to be going for a for an Inter win. Obviously, they're Interisti here, going for a positive uh, <laughs> result. But yeah, I'm not going to blame them. Yeah, I'm I'm going I'm going for what King Darian says here. Two one two one Inter. Uh, I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet because, as you said, you know, you guys. Um, I think yeah, Vlahovic is just uh, he's he's going to be boiling over <laughs> before you know going th- three matches in a row without scoring or something. He's gonna he's yeah. gonna make it happen. Um, but yeah, defensively, you guys just don't convince me. You know, the your back line doesn't convince me. Um, but yeah, at the same time, as someone put, unless Handanovic, Handanovic doesn't convince me either. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going. I'm going for a two-one victory again. I think we will score one off a set piece. I think Skriniar is like in a crazy form at the moment. It seems like he wins every every header from a from a set piece. So either him or De Vrij getting one because Hakan's back on the corners. Um, so our, our all our set pieces now are so dangerous with Di Marco or Hakan taking them. And then yeah, Lautaro to get that fifty-third goal to equal Samuel Eto and uh, Lothar Mateus. So that's what I'm going for. And to return or retain the first place in the league yeah that i'm i'm not gonna fight you on that that all seems very reasonable to me yeah uh <laughs> Teresa brother says way too positive <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey let's just hope that's how inter go and do it as well right and uh yeah. i mean especially with the with the 
I mean, the fixture list is just brutal for y'all coming yeah, up yeah. after this. So I'm, I'm really hoping that there's a little bit of, of overlooking there. I mean, having to welcome Adelanta, who have been a little bit slow off the mark, it seems like this year, but are just, I mean, there's still Adelanta, it's still Gasparini, they've still got everyone, and they're going to be getting desperate now. And then that trip to Kiev is that's tough on anyone. And then exactly. having to go this to is going to be a right really after. difficult month. Um, yeah, Fiorentina, Atalanta, Shakhtar, and Sassuolo before the international break. So yeah, it's a very difficult four four matches for Inter at the moment. Yeah, what, what about what about you guys, Fiorentina? Uh, well, uh, no no midweek uh, after this because oh. you know. Not a lot of European stuff going on, but yeah, next up it's Udinese, and then I believe it's Lazio after that. No, sorry, Udinese, Napoli. Napoli, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you've got a, yeah, Udinese, this season they're looking pretty good, to be fair. Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, the trip to Udinese always gives me the chills a little bit, one, because yeah. Fiorentina always drop points there, and two, because Davide Authority, that's where that all happened. So going up there, I always get a little bit of a, of a weird feeling yeah good That's point from weird. interista forever that says you guys are not really used to playing every three days which is true i mean it's fiorentina they're not used to playing more than once a month if we're being honest <laughs> the other time they just wander out onto the field <laughs> <laughs> so no that's that's a very good point i think exhaustion especially with uh with italiano system that requires a lot of running a lot of activity could could very much be an issue for fiorentina that's that's yeah. a good point yeah, and as you said, Bonaventura doing another 90 minutes is not ideal. Yeah, I, I'm sure he'll come off after an hour or so, which, yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah, no, Tito, man, that was, uh, that was really interesting as always. You're, um, you always bring in uh, great insight. No, Handanovic next season, Lee Hero, he's not, he's not, his contract expires at the end of this season. So um, if hopefully it's not renewed, um, I mean, if it is renewed, as a caveat, there has to be as a number two, not as the starting number one anymore. So, yeah, he's yeah. definitely not going to be, in my opinion, Inter's number one keeper next season. But you're gonna you're gonna do Alex Cordats like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the he we brought him in. He's the young prospect that we bring him through. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> uh, now, Biggie says he's got a soft spot for Fiorentina. Yeah, I think it's one of those teams that I personally find hard to dislike. You know, your kit. The city of Florence, like the players that you have, I always find it quite difficult to dislike you guys. So yeah, always. Uh, and this season with Italiano, are actually a nice team to watch. Finally, yeah. I mean that that's the thing. Even when Fiorentina are under Giuseppe Iacchini, at worst you can say we're harmless. At best, <laughs> at best we're inoffensive, and you can't not like us at least a little bit. So yeah. we're we're fine with that. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, no, thank you very much, Tito, for coming on once again. You're your third cap to be the all-time uh, record cap holder of uh, non interisti on this channel. Um, someone thought it was Jerry Mancini in the Laziale, but it's not. <laughs> Jerry only has two caps. <laughs> oh, so I'm, pull I'm pulling level with him. No, he has, he has two. You're, you're on three oh, yes. now. Oh, all right. Well, there you go, Mancho. Gotcha. Yeah. Quick yeah. question for, for you there, if, you, if you're interested to answer. Yeah, I'm. Uh, how did you guess that I'm American? Uh, yes, I, <laughs> I'm originally from Texas, but I currently live in Seattle. The rain, the rainy city, right? Yeah, it's rainy, but uh, looking out the window right now, and it is pure blue skies, not a cloud. But it's always rainy. Nobody move up here. It's terrible. I swear. <laughs> Sounds like England. Yeah, nah, it's <laughs> it's great. It's wonderful. But yeah, but yeah. is there anything you want to plug before going? Uh. Not in particular. I mean, the, the bottom line scrolling under says where we are, violanation.com, at violanation on Twitter. I think we've got a podcast episode coming out in the next couple of days. I, everyone who's watching this obviously has the internet. You can find us if you want. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they're a recommended follow. Definitely. Even if you're not you know, interested in Fiorentina, the, the way they cover Fiorentina is quite funny. I've, if you're going to be a Fiorentina fan, you have to have a sense of humor about it, right? Like you're you're not going to win anything, so you may as well have a good time. Hey, you never know. You never know. Italiano season, you never know. Coppa Italia in the works, maybe. Hey, maybe a, maybe a Leicester season. Who can say? Ooh. <laughs> but all right, Tito, man, thank you for coming on. Thank you, everyone that's interacted in the chat today. Everyone's been very active. I really enjoyed this uh, this chat and interacting with everyone. Make sure everyone you leave a thumbs up before you leave. 
the live stream and the subscribe to the channel if you're new, even if you're a Fiorentina fan. <laughs> um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching Forza Inter, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.